Um, one of our most recent, and this is the last point to it, is to be clever enough as an art consultant to realize that you really shouldn't do very much at all. Uh, and sometimes the client brings you in and they really want to do a lot, uh, but you talk to the architect, you look at the space, you look at the situation, you think, you know what, frankly, we should do as little as we can possibly get away with. Maybe I could ask you, I mean, most of the artworks you've done have been in the, the context of new buildings that you've designed. Um, have you done work where you've, you've been asked to provide paintings or sculptures in other people's, inter in other people's interiors? No one's ever asked me to do that. Um, I'm, I'm, ha I'm happy with that. I'm, 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 I like to be the collaborator and the facilitator for other things to happen. So in, there is a certain crossover between uh, ourselves, but in, in that respect. The other thing is this question of um, the different sorts of collaboration, because when you're making a building from the outset and you can, you're talking to Bruce McLean or whatever else you're working with, in a sense, you, that you're, on a, you're in a test bed situation because you can mess about, if I could put it like that, and actually have quite a lot of time to think about the direction that the building is taking as well as the artwork. Now, this is quite different to the situations you generally find yourself in, Alex, where you're more likely to be working with, with a whole series of givens. And I wonder what, the, um, what your experience is of artists who might be working in both situations and whether whether there are some who actually prefer the discipline of having a fairly rigid set of givens and others who actually don't like that at all and, and, and would really like the, the freedom to be able to manipulate uh, or distort in a fairly free way. Any? I think most of the art, I, I think you're right, I think probably 80% of the projects were involved, if not 90%, there are already constraints. It's not a blank sheet of paper, which is that wonderful opportunity. So I think the majority of artists we will are, are accepting of that environment. In fact, many of them actually like a few constraints. It makes their life easier. The blank sheet of paper is quite a frightening place to start for many artists. Um, and I think probably a lot of artists are drawn to our world because they're happy in that environment. But uh, occasionally we do have, we have some artists that really relish the challenge and in those cases when we're able to embed someone as a lead artist right from the beginning you get some quite dramatic outcomes mm. and Will, is your experience that um, artists who work with architects a lot um, do they does the architecture as it were rub off on them do they become something else as artists because of that interchange and i'm making an assumption certainly in your case that that our architects, I would say, are inherently artistic to a greater or lesser extent. But I'm not sure whether artists, because of um, the actual business of creating uh, you know, three-dimensional envelopes and the business of construction and the business of planning permissions and the business of mistakes or lack of, it's a rather different thing. But do you think Bruce McLean is a different artist now, having worked on, on so many pieces with you? I think he is, whether he admit to that or not, I don't know. I mean, I think a more precise sort of a response to your question is that we, we employ artists, young artists, in the office. That's what I liked about some, some things you were saying, is, is your role as curator. And I think that certainly if, if I'm about to start a work with one or two artists or whatever, who I perhaps know very well, I would find it personally very useful you come in as a curator, as a sort of, as that alien, to actually bounce a few questions off. I think that'd be really good. I'm going to ask a final question of each of you, which is whether, um, in your experience, um, clients, public authorities, whoever it might be, uh, are becoming more interested um, in using art for, for, for whatever particular reason. Uh, is art and architecture becoming more powerful as an, as an idea? or will it inevitably suffer as a result of economic setbacks? Are we going to see people saying, well, I'll cut the landscape budget, I'll cut the art budget, or do you think that the movement towards greater collaboration will continue? Alex? I think that we've got to reflect the current economic environment. I think the other thing is that the nature of the workplace is changing as well. So in fact, with the, the change in materials, and there's much more glass around, you know, the traditional kind of corporate collection is in a kind of squeeze, you know, so economically and also in terms of its, its value to people's workplace. So using art, I think flip side is there is a general consensus in a sense that it's, the artwork should at least be considered. 
in some shape or form. It's either being part of the package, depending on who you hire as your architect, it's an artistic approach, or it needs to be considered. But it has to be integrated, it has to make a difference, either in perception of the, the company or the place. Because just building the kind of corporate art collection that was has become almost a, a, faction, a faction of the 80s and 90s, that is not going to be the given anymore. So you've got to make a difference, and you've got to be different, and you've got to do the, get in and be integrated.